So when I was 13, one of my teachers told me something that stuck with me for years. I don't remember which teacher it was or what project it was about, but I remember this. She wasn't very impressed by my project and she told me, you know, your problem is, you're just not very creative. And that sentence really stuck with me for a while. I'm Carolina and I've been posting my artwork online for a few months now. I haven't just shared images, I've shared reels as well, which have been a true challenge for me, but I think they've helped me improve a lot. Since I've managed to keep it up for a while, thankfully I've had a lot of great feedback, a lot of people coming by, new followers, new eyes on me, a lot more than I was used to. And because of that, I've gotten a few questions actually and a few DMs and comments about one specific thing. How to actually improve your art. While I share a bit of my experience and some tips, I'll show you the process behind this illustration that I love so much. Since I've only been sharing 20 second snippets of my work, I really hope you enjoy this longer and more detailed version. I do love the close-ups, it's so satisfying. I wasn't sure why people were asking me, but then I realized I've been sharing my work for almost 10 years online. Mostly just pictures of my drawings, my sketchbooks and so on. Actually, if you go back, which I wouldn't recommend, but you can, you'll see that I did change a lot, but of course it took years. But the biggest change came in 2020, when because of some big changes in my life, stuff that I might tell you some other time, I stopped, not just sharing my work, I stopped drawing altogether for two whole years. And when I found my way back, I shared this video. In it, I described how tough it was to stop and how excited I was to start again, even if it was still pretty scary. And the response was amazing. So many people shared how they felt the same way, how it was scary to get yourself out there. And that reminded me of that teacher. Maybe she was right, maybe she wasn't, I'll never know. But she didn't try to help me and she didn't say anything else. I realized that that stuck with me, but not because of her. It was because of the way I looked at myself, the way I saw myself in my work. And I was really young, of course, but still, it stuck. And that was the first time I truly hurt myself and my growth. I was the artsy kid back then, and I felt like I needed to prove myself to other people when I should just be focused on myself. And then you start overthinking and being a perfectionist. You might feel like you're doing everything right, all the right exercises, the right studies, and still feel like you're not going anywhere. You can feel stuck and start being harsh on your work. Maybe the problem isn't what you're doing, it's what you're feeling. For me to get out of such a scary headspace and to start drawing again and finding a lot of amazing progress I had never felt before, I mean, look at the difference. It was still me, but I was so much more confident in my strokes. The line work didn't scare me anymore, it was exciting and the pressure felt off. All the exercises and studies were the same. It was me who changed. It took me a while to get there, but I realized three things that completely changed me in my art skills and I want to share that with you today. First, here are some practical exercises I did last year. A lot of anatomy and pose studies. I recommend these places to start. I studied some movie frames that I don't usually share, but it's great for lighting and composition. And I went back to the basics. Perspective, color theory, and I learned a few new tools. I learned a lot from these channels. Check them out if you want to get back to the basics and learn some cool things. Maybe you know these already. I realized that these exercises were a big part of how I grew, but they really weren't the most important part. So let me tell you the first thing I was missing to truly grow. Honesty. Wherever you are in your journey, sometimes your eyes just don't catch up to your progress. When starting anything new, any small steps feel amazing. But later on, you might not even realize the amount of progress you're making. What that teacher told me might have been valid at the time, but without any explanation or help, it just left me with a negative feeling and didn't help me at all when it should have. Being able to look humbly at yourself as just someone who is eager to learn is an amazing thing. We're not important or gifted or anything like that. Because the truth is, you should be able to see when there is work to do and where you should celebrate the achievements, no matter how small. Being honest with yourself also means that you should try and understand yourself and why you feel certain things, like 
do I want to get better because I love this and I want to keep going? Or is it just because I saw someone do it better? Are you really practicing and studying and putting in the work? Or are you maybe just avoiding the boring anatomy stuff and basics of perspective and proportion and just not looking enough for growth in the discomfort? Going out of your comfort zone is what usually pushes you through those barriers. It's okay to see it for what it is. And it can be refreshing to just be honest. So maybe you have this really cool idea for a piece that involves a really cool character with a few pet sidekicks. But you imagine this really specific pose and you're really not used to drawing animals. So you get stuck in the first few minutes and instead of doing some studies on the side, maybe you just realize, well, it's probably cool with just a character, right? Maybe right now it does, but you might have missed a really big leap in understanding something new. I definitely did this before. But being uncomfortable is part of the process. It's a fight and it can be fun if you give it an honest chance. It was for me, even if it takes time and is very frustrating at times. Observation is key. But on the other side, also realize when you're being too harsh on yourself. That can mean you have been practicing a lot and just not seeing enough progress. In which case, you're doing your best and that's pretty much enough. Or because you feel like you haven't been practicing enough and you just aren't feeling it at the moment. That happened to me a lot. And let me tell you, shaming yourself for not getting it together to practice will only make you want to do it less. Be kind to yourself. Yes, it's good to push yourself to do it, but shame is not going to do it. Maybe for some people. But personally, it absolutely crushed me. Negative self-talk is toxic and it preys on your insecurities and fears. Don't let it win. Practice positive self-talk. It's honestly one of the hardest things I've had to face and still is at times. But practice telling yourself, hey, you're good. Things take time. Keep finding the joy in it. Listen to some good music and take good care of yourself first. I think one of these days I'll tell you the story of how I stopped drawing. It's two years I'm not getting back. Because I wasn't kind to myself. Progress will only come for a happy, healthy human being. So be that first. The second thing that stopped me from growing was a lack of curiosity. I started drawing when I was really, really young. I was pretty much just a child having fun, doing what I loved and being really curious about it. The first time you actually make a drawing, you don't care if it's going to be good. You're just having fun. You want to see where you can take things. I didn't care if it was good or not. If it looked remotely like a face, I was the proudest artist ever. The beautiful way that a child just does what they want because they want to. I wasn't just shy if someone saw me draw or asked about it. Why should I? I'm just doing this for fun. It's not a big deal. Do you know how I know that I was having fun? I'll show you. This is my sketchbook at the moment. Let's see if we can find a trend. These are my sketchbooks. I'm not sure if I should show you these or not. Some of them are embarrassing. I'm not gonna lie, but I still think it could be a lot of fun and interesting. So if you want to see that, just let me know. I do think it's really fun to see how much I've grown and how much fun I was having. Whether it was just doodles or random things that were happening at the moment, I remember filling these at school, in class or before even classes started. I remember taking these in school trips or just drawing in my bed. I have some drawings from my friends, some almost diary-like entries which are so cool to look through. The more recent ones, you can clearly tell the difference. It's a bit more evolved. It's fun to watch the evolution. I actually had a few extra that are not here because they are not completed. They're like half filled for some reason, so I'm not going to show that. It would be cheating, basically. This to say that I fill these without a care in the world. It was so much fun, so much freeing. It was amazing. But once you start getting attached to your work and feeling like it defines you, you want to be better and better and it will probably never stop. So when things start to feel overwhelming, remember the curiosity, remember the fun. That's honestly the time that you make the most progress. When you're just having fun, it's what will drive you. It's what will make you keep going. Sometimes I still struggle with this because I started drawing thinking of how well it will do or not. And I have to stop myself. This can be challenging, but try to get rid of preconceptions of who you are, how good you are or not, what you think you can or can't do, or what others think. Find what you love to see and would love to do and go after it. 
Be curious and know that you can do it if you put in the work and you're patient. Number three, the people around you. This is a very personal subject that maybe not a lot of people talk about, but I find it to be very, very true. I don't need to get into specifics to just tell you that the people around you matter and they are the ones who will shape how you see yourself and your life in general. I grew up in a pretty old-fashioned household and didn't know any people who even remotely liked art or even just appreciated it. No one from my family really cared about it and as probably a lot of you go through, art is just not seen as a career. At school, at some point, there were a few kids who also liked it and as I grew older, especially in college, I saw for the first time a group of people who loved it as much as I did or even more, if that was even possible. I saw passion, care, opportunities and art being talked about as an actual career path as a purpose, as a tangible thing that I wasn't just creating in my head. And that was incredibly refreshing. I'm not necessarily saying that for that reason college is necessary in your path. I just mean that the people around you can either discard your dreams or absolutely fuel them. I truly believe that. And there is no better example for this than my partner, the person I share my life with. Having someone in your life that shows you kindness and care, even if they don't really understand the art world or have any experience with it, and this applied to everything in my life. I had so much repressed guilt from childhood traumas and so much anxiety and stress. This man honestly just looked at me and said, I don't even understand why you feel this way. You're great. You should do it. I know you love it so much. Don't be afraid of it. You can do it. It's gonna be okay. Having someone who listens to your dreams and pulls you up is absolutely incredible. Him and the small but great group of people I have around me right now, they do that. They believed in me. Not because I'm great or anything, but because they asked how, why and what and help me up when they knew I was down. It's not about knowing. It's not about all the connections you can have with the right people. It's having kind people who love you and will support you. If it wasn't for him, I honestly think I might have never picked up a pencil again. I don't think this necessarily has to be a romantic partner. Far from that, it can be just your family, your friends, the people you trust. I really do believe that. Because I always prefer to do everything by myself. I always prefer to be alone. When the only voice in your head is your own. If you're going through a dark path, there is no one who's gonna stop you. You're just gonna sabotage yourself into making those fears a reality. And when I was going through a dark path, I believe that I could have changed it, but I didn't. Was it really my fault? I mean, when it's really dark around you, how can you tell where to go? Would you blame yourself for bumping your head into the walls as you're trying to find your way out? If you can't see anything around you, there's nowhere to go. Because at any point in your life, someone can just tell you that you're not enough. I am still dealing with this, but it's a lot better after you start seeing a bit more clearly. And it's not so dark anymore. If you're going through a tough time right now, try to relax, try to breathe do some exercise, eat healthy, find the right people to surround yourself with. And most importantly, be kind to yourself. Does it sound like a cliche? Yes, it does. Is it still true? I think so. There's this podcast that I really love with Rick Rubin, an incredible music producer who shares a lot of great insight and advice when it comes to artists and their creative work. I will leave the link in the description if you want to listen to the full episode, but I really just want to share with you this moment that just made me click when I first heard it. I haven't been making much music, man. My my focus is not there. My confidence is not there. I'd like to, but it's just it's just not coming. I think you make a lot of th- you start making a lot of things with no thinking mm-hmm. of what it's supposed to be or who's it for or what anyone else is going to think but just get in the habit of making a lot that's what i got to get back to yeah, yeah just make a lot and then at some point in that process you'd be like hmm i really like this it did and you didn't know like through, through that whole process you don't know when that's going to happen yeah and it's not um it's not a decision you make and it's not an intellectual idea where I have a vision and I'm going to make this thing it doesn't it doesn't happen like there rarely happens like that. It happens more just having fun, 
doing Making it. things, no stakes. I just wanted to say that these are the flaws I've found on my own experience as an artist or just a random girl that wants to be one and has found some solid ways to cope with anxiety and stress when it comes to art. I did all these things and more, and maybe you don't relate to it as much, and that's okay too. But if you're a bit of an overthinker like me, I hope this helps, even if just a little bit. You can do it, be fearless, be kind, and I'm sure you'll see the true growth in your work that you've been waiting for. Thank you for watching.